We have a question. It's kind of actually parallel to the, that your question. It's from Diva. And Diva says, I'm a 50-year-old female kettlebell enthusiast. And I've been training with bells since 2014. I walk thrice a week and strength train thrice a week, incorporating programs with the squat, hinge, pull, and press, and a little bit of carries as well. Wanted to have your insight on training for longevity, as that's my goal. Uh, well, you're already there. <laughs> you're already there. So the research on exercise, it's funny, if, if you read uh, some of the new books on longevity, and I've done this in a couple of my past podcasts, uh, I have all the books right there in my office. You know, it, over and over and over for longevity, they keep saying this, exercise. Uh, what about this pill? Uh, that's fine. But if you exercise, you probably don't need a pill. What about this diet? Mm -hmm, good point. Exercise. Uh, even things like smoking. Well, yeah. But if you exercise, you yeah, you'll you'll be better statistically than a smoker who doesn't exercise. Uh, exercise. Exercise. You're already doing it. Uh, Spring Chicken by Bill Gifford he recommends that you only need a hundred minutes a week of exercise. Well, it's as soon as I finish this podcast, I'm going to do well over. 100 minutes of exercise. Uh, it's just, and, and that's just in one day. You're already doing the most important thing. Now, what you're doing very well, and gentle listeners, I want you to listen to this. Uh, she is mixing uh, walking with strength training. And that probably for most people is the best thing you can do. Uh, I, I like the idea of having fast twitch work for longevity programs but the fast twitch work has to be uh, done safely. Um, you know, I watched someone get inter, uh, injured about a week ago uh, playing something the person obviously shouldn't have been playing. Um, and, and they're gonna be fine. It was just a, it was just a, an, an injury that was soft tissue injury. But it was pretty obvious to me that this person hadn't done anything fast in a long time as I was, as I was talking to them. Um, one of the reasons you wanna include fast twitch stuff is that if you have to jump over a rattlesnake or if you have to jump up on a ledge or if you if you have to run to help somebody you don't want to pull every muscle in your body when you're going so the the only thing and and what's nice about the question here is that you say you're hinging and for a lot of people the kettlebell swing or any member of the hinge family the hip thrust uh, can be fast twitch and it seems to help a lot so for training for longevity there should, uh, there should be a walking component. There should be the fundamental human movements, push, pull, hinge, squat, load, and carry. And at some level, um, some of the training should in include some, some speed work at some level. It doesn't mean you have to do sprints. It doesn't mean you have to do 10,000 swing challenge. It just means make sure you add something that makes you move fast. One of the ways you can do it, and uh, I did this last week, is I, we had this, uh, the, I was playing a soccer game with some of the young kids and they had that, that, that big bouncy ball that you use for fitness. And we were playing and we, we kicked the ball and laughed for a long time. Oddly, and I should have sensed this, I was sore in places that are all fast, which uh, powerhouse places in my body. Um, <laughs> as much glute work as I do, my glutes were still sore. As much uh, lower body work as I do, my hamstrings were still sore. My calves were sore. All those fast twitch mus muscle fibers that I think I work on when I played a game with a bunch of 10 year olds of soccer, those ca all came back up. So remember that, walk, fundamental human movements, some fast twitch is appropriate. Okay, thank you, good question.